so GDP is a measure of all the, the total value of goods and services produced in a country. Uh, but it doesn't tell us whether we are producing good stuff or bad stuff. So we have bad stuff like armaments. Uh, these are things that used to kill people by right. It, is, it actually is detrimental to society because you are destroying life. You see? So if you measure in terms of social dimension, we are producing, producing something that is what we call uh, economic bad. You see? And another economic bad is uh, environmental pollution. So if you are producing a lot of uh, polluting industries that, 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 that produce all those goods and services that we, we use, and that also contribute to a decline in the quality of our uh, environment and that is also uh, uh, what we call economic debt. You see? Another one is of course when you deplete our natural resources, for example oil and gas or even natural forests if it's shrinking, our deforestation, that also contributes to a, what we call an economic debt you see, for the country. So GDP does not consider all this, whether it's good or bad. You see? It takes into consideration just total value of goods and services that we produce in a, in a year or in a particular period. You see? So that is also one of the shortcomings of the GDP. So I think there are uh, a slew of measures being used by countries or being developed by countries all over the world, basically to provide a broader, broader measure of what you call human progress or human, uh, human development. You see. Uh, we can highlight out of the so many, perhaps 10 dimensions that uh, 10 different indicators that, that are currently being used and where uh, Malaysia can actually uh, look at where it stands in, in those dimensions. First, uh, we have of course this environmental performance index and that basically shows where Malaysia stands in terms of its care for the environment. Okay, second, of course we have our human development index which is actually developed by the United Nations Development Programme and it is actually a widely followed index to see to what extent the, the different countries have achieved in terms of the three dimensions economic, uh, life expectancy and then importantly on education. Um, another one is actually method three, environmental sustainability index and this is similar to the environment performance index but this looks at how we are preserving the environment for future generations, the sustainability of our environment. Number four is actually the Global Competitiveness Report. Basically, it measures how competitive Malaysia is in terms of economic efficiency and in terms of its, uh, what they call the business environment, and, and as well as the ability to sustain growth. You see. So in terms of attracting investment, in terms of uh, maintaining its economic dynamism. The fifth one is actually uh, Global Livability Ranking. Uh, this gives an indication as to how, what is the quality of life uh, when, when compared to different cities all over the world. So this livability is also another dimension because it, gives, it shows uh, how comfortable we are, how safe, comfortable and how convenient we are when we live in a particular country when compared to other locations. The sixth index is actually World Happiness Report. This report actually provides a, a measure of the level of happiness or contentment of the country's citizens. So it actually is a, it's a measure to indicate to us the perception of the people in terms of their satisfaction with their life and as ex expressed in the happiness index. The, the next one is of course the Legatum uh, Prosperity Index and this is based on the perspective of the economy that covers all different dimensions of entrepreneurship, on governance, education, health, safety, freedom uh, to choose different types of activities. So all these are part and parcel of uh, the life satisfaction index. So it conveys to the, to the public uh, uh, the different dimensions that is taken together as a part of what we call prosperity. The eighth dimension is uh, social progress. Uh, for this, as we all know, social progress will cover different types of social and environmental, uh, such as access to basic needs, health, education, and also the ability, the opportunities given for people to improve their lives or improve their livelihood. You see? So this is part of the social progress index, basically an indication of social mobility. You see? So you are, you are able to move up the, the social ladder. You see? If, that, if it's very easy, then of course this makes, it, makes a country more amenable for the people to actually improve their lives. You see? The next one, the ninth index, is actually the index of economic freedom. And economic freedom 
is one that, uh, especially in advanced countries, they put a lot of emphasis on freedom, on individual liberty, on, uh, on good governance, on democratic rights, on universal uh, freedom and all these things. So that, that index provides a measure of uh, so-called economic freedom. The uh, last measure, 10th measure, is actually gross national happiness, although it's not an index, but it provides a measure of uh, how happy or how contented the citizens are in the country. So, so it helps us to measure, to gauge the contentment and the happiness expressed by the people uh, in, the, in that particular country. Okay, every country would have its own vision of what they want to be, what they want the economy and their society to be. So I think uh, for small countries, I think some of the good development models that we can follow is actually the North uh, Scandinavian countries because they, despite being small, despite being uh, uh, so-called isolated in a way, uh, they have actually reached what they call developed nation status but with a very important distinction in that they are able to ensure a balanced society, balanced development between economic progress and societal progress.